everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this easy headband mask helper. This is a headband that one could wear and hook their mask onto to kind of save their ears from getting sore. A lot of people have to wear masks for a very long time right now, and this is a really comfortable way to wear the mask. An added bonus of wearing a headband mask helper is that it keeps the hair off the face. So all those little like tickly hair pieces, it keeps you hopefully from touching your face um, if you need to get your hair off your face. So it does also keep the hair off the face, which is a, a great added bonus to this. I also wanted to mention, I shared these other mask helpers yesterday. So these go in the back of the head and they um, hook the uh, mask on in the back as well. So try them both. See what you like best. I know a lot of places are asking for these um, types of donations right now, so consider making some of these items for charity as well. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna make the headband. I'm gonna show you how to seam it, and um, it's a really easy project to make, super basic stitches. I also wanted to show you what the mask looks like off too. It is simply just a ring with two buttons sewn on either side. We're gonna make a nice long strip, sew it up, sew two buttons on either side, it's a wonderful project to help people who may be wearing these masks for a long time. And it's very like a clever way to keep your mask off your ears and your hair off your face. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors. You'll need a tapestry needle, and you may also need a smaller tapestry needle for your buttons if your other one is too large. Uh, a ruler or tape measure to measure uh, the head as you work and the length of your headband to get it right. We're gonna be using a 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook, and then you'll need some cotton dishcloth yarn. My favorite is Scrubby Smoothie from Red Heart. I'm gonna be using this pink one today, but I wanted to show you the label also. To begin, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop reach in with your hook, pull up that loop and tighten. And let me just zoom in a teeny bit more so you can see. The next thing we're gonna do is chain eight. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Next, what we're gonna do is work a half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. This loop here does not count, so we're gonna go one, two, three in that third chain from the hook, and we're gonna make a half double crochet. So to make a half double crochet, wrap yarn around the hook, insert it into that third chain from the hook, and bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through all three loops, okay? Then we're gonna work a half double crochet in each chain across our row here. We're gonna be working vertically and then we're going to seam the ends. Okay, so just work your half double crochets in each chain across. Okay, so that's row one. So let's move on to row two. Row two is what you'll repeat for the rest of your headband. It's super duper easy. What we're gonna do is chain two, one, two, turn your work, work a half double crochet in that very first stitch, work a half double crochet in each stitch across. So we're just gonna do this, this row together in its entirety. Half double crochet in the next stitch, half double crochet in the next stitch, half double crochet in the next stitch, and then you're gonna work a half double crochet into that turning chain at the end of the row, okay? So then what you're gonna do is repeat row two over and over and over until you have a nice long strip that you can wrap around your head. What I would recommend is measuring the head first and kind of getting an idea, or you can, um, you know, measure your head, or you can just keep going and kind of put it on your head as you go along, okay? So repeat row two over and over, and then we'll rejoin. I'm gonna show you how to finish up the rest of the headband. Just working that last stitch of the row, and I have a nice long strip now. So I went for about 19 inches, and that was the size that worked best 
uh, for me. Um, and I also tried it on a like a one of those foam heads, those women's size foam heads, just to make sure. Um, you can get head circumference sizes online also, and I will put it on the blog post. So what we want to do now is we need to seam these together. So what you want to do is cut the yarn and leave a nice long tail because you're going to use that tail to sew it together. Wrap the yarn around the hook and pull it through the loop. And we have a tail down here at the end, so let's weave that in really quick too. One thing I wanted to mention is when you are working your strip, when you're crocheting your strip, make sure that it's on more of the snug side. You don't want your headband to be too loose because it'll slip around, okay? So you want it to, to be nice and snug. I mean, obviously not tight. You don't want it to be tight on your head or squeeze, but you want it to have a little bit of snugness to kind of stay put. Okay, so what we're gonna do is cut the yarn. Now go back here to your tail. And what we're gonna do is thread the tail and we're gonna sandwich these two pieces together. I'm gonna do a simple whip stitch and we're going to just, um, that's like a nice invisible seam and it's super easy. It's just kind of like a spiral through. So we're just gonna go through both layers and just whip stitch it together really quick. Now this is very narrow, so it's just a couple of stitches across here. We're just gonna go right on across, keeping everything nice and straight, nice and neat. And then what I like to do too when I'm seaming two ends is to kind of come out on the side like that, okay? Now, when your last stitch, leave a loop there and you're gonna send your needle through that loop and pull tightly. And then what you can do is open it back up and then just before you take the needle off, here, you're just gonna weave that tail in. Just go, same thing, just go in one direction with your tapestry needle pull snug, go back in the other direction to lock that tail into place. Okay, so now we're ready to sew our buttons on. So grab two buttons. They don't have to be the same button, uh, especially if you're trying to crank a bunch of these out to help people. Um, the important thing is that you're making them. So I just happen to have two matching. They don't have to be matching. And as a matter of fact, this doesn't even have to be the same color. You could make them kind of on the scrappy side, just like scraps of fabric and make it stripey. Um, and that would actually make them a lot of fun if they were all mixed up. So go ahead and cut a piece of yarn, thread your smaller tapestry needle because that um, larger one won't fit through our buttonholes. And then what I like to do, I grabbed my foam head. So let me just zoom way out so you can see what I'm doing here. We're gonna put the foam head here and I'm gonna slip this headband right on. Okay, so see how our headband is nice and snug? It just goes right across here. Now my foam head does not have ears, <laughs> obviously. So we want to um, just imagine that. And then when we wear a mask, like so, we're gonna wanna hook it onto our headband buttons, okay? So if you put the mask on, kind of locate where those buttons would be. So I'm gonna do it on either side. Mine is really right where, on oh my head, is right where this seam is. So I'm gonna kind of use that as a guide. Okay, so pull that off and you're gonna just place the button where you want it to go. And I'll zoom back in so you can see. Grab your needle and you're just gonna come in from, from the back and go through, don't pull it all the way through. And then just sew your button right on. Just get it right on there. just like that, and then flip it over, and then you're just gonna tie a knot right into the yarn, right on the back. So this is the inside. You can take the time and weave this in nice and neat, or you can just snip it flush. It's totally up to you. I'm just gonna give mine a little snip. And then we're going to, this tail is plenty long to sew the other button, we're just gonna sew the other button right on. So what I wanna do is put the headband back on, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be directly across, but I just wanna double check. So slip that headband back on. Let me zoom back out. And remember I was using the seam here, 
as my guideline. I'm just slipping that right on there. Okay, so there's my one button, and then we're gonna go across, and I'm just gonna like mark it with my hand. I'm gonna put it right there, okay? So hold your other button on there, and come in from the back, and then leave yourself a little tail so you can tie it back on later. And then just get that button on there, make sure everything's nice and snug. And then flip it over and then just tie it right on. Make sure you tie it on nice and tight so everything stays put. Just like that. Okay, and then like I said before, you can just cut it flush or you can weave the ends in. It's completely up to you, it won't show. Okay, so if you do look at it from the top view, they are on exactly the opposite sides. And then this was our seam, so that's nice to put that in the back. Okay, so here is our headband. We're just gonna slip it on like that. So that's what it's gonna look when, like when someone wears it with the buttons. And so when they wear their mask, they can just hook it right on. Okay, so I got it on there. The headband is on, the mask is hooked to the side button on either side. And that is how you make a headband mask helper. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.